nobody wants to catch an L when you're investing in the market. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. It's P. If you are new here, welcome. If you are a regular subscriber, viewer of these videos, welcome back. This is where we talk about money, finances, and we try to give you as much information as possible to empower your financial choices. It doesn't matter whether you're a first-time investor, whether you're looking to be better with your money management, pay off debt, buy your first home, this is where you need to be. In today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing another app. It's called Wombat. Now, as some of you will know, I am a qualified financial advisor. I'm a qualified mortgage advisor. I've worked in the industry for 15 years across banking and wealth management. And when I do these reviews, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to position myself as a first-time investor, strip back all of my knowledge and think, as a first-time investor, are these providers giving me the information that I need so that I can make an informed decision? That's why I really believe that my skill set and my experience can add value to your choices and to your journeys as you embark on them. So, if you are new to this channel, please don't forget to smash the like button. It will help me out massively with the YouTube algorithm and to subscribe because these videos come out on a weekly basis. And just to make sure that you don't miss out, please hit the notification bell so that you're notified every single time I upload. I'm gonna be out of the car very, very shortly and we'll go through the Wombat app. Let's go. Hey guys, so we're back at my desk and I'm gonna talk you through the Wombat website. Now the website is very, very similar to the app. In fact, the information that you get on both are identically the same. So let's jump over here. I'm gonna talk you through the app, uh, the website, sorry, and I'm gonna highlight a few things that I think are important for you to know so that you can make an informed decision. And again, that's the starting point here. Are they giving you enough information as a first time investor in order for you to make an informed decision about what you want to do? And I'm looking at it from a financial services um, professional's point of view, because I've been in the industry for quite some time. Now, homepage is really, really good. One thing that I love that they've done here is on the right hand side, they have given a glimpse of what the customer experience is like. So you using the app with them, it gives you a clear idea of what the app looks like, the colors, the feel, the fact that you've got access to it. I think for many first time investors, that's an important thing. You can see how much your investment is worth and you know that it's there. You can always access it via your smartphone. Now let's have a look down here. Why Wombat? So with Wombat, you're free to trade up to a thousand pounds in your personal investment account with unlimited trades and education. Subscription with balances over a thousand pounds costs just one pound per month and 0.45% per year ETF provider fees apply. So I guess what they're saying here is that that 0.5, but 0.45% per year does not include any ETF provider fees. And that's a question that we're gonna come back to a bit later on. One thing that I have noticed here is they talk about trade, okay? Trading and investing are two different things. And this is where language really, really matters. When you trade stock, it's not the same thing as investing in stock. So the use of trade here for me, it does, I have a question on the back of that, but let's just keep building through this and we can go from there. Simple sign up, build a portfolio, choose from a range of carefully, carefully created funds that reflect your interests and beliefs. Okay. so. From looking at this, what I'm what I'm hoping that they will have is they will have a number of funds which will include stocks and bonds because typically that's what a fund consists of, a stock and a bond. A bond is a counter lever. If you follow me on Instagram or you watch any of my previous review um, sort of videos, you know that I talk about equities, stocks, and I talk about bonds quite a lot. Those two things are very, very important. It's counterbalance. You will get most of your growth in equities, but bonds are a safe defense mechanism when you're going on your journey, when you're deploying a strategy. So what I'm hoping here is in the portfolio, there will be an element of bonds as well to measure, to balance your risk, to act as a defense mechanism. Effortlessly invest, take full control of how you invest, or automate the process with a simple click. Okay, that's fine. Featured in, don't really be able to pay too much about this kind of stuff, that's always good to know, but it's not really important for you as a first time investor. How investing works with Wombat. Now I actually watched this video, it only lasts 30 seconds, and it doesn't really give you any more information than you already know just by reading through this top page here, in my opinion. Um, but let's have a look at building your own portfolio because this is where they're talking about the fact that they've curated funds. 
and this is what I want to see. I want to see, first and foremost, how many they have available, how they're actually built, and I'd also like to know how they actually position you in knowing which one of these funds best suits you so that you're making an informed decision of, right, this fund is certainly for me. And whether they actually cover the risk conversation as well, because when you invest, clearly there is a risk. Markets go up and down, so you can get back less than you um, invest in the first place in day one if you don't play it quite right or the markets don't quite go as you would expect them to. What I'd like to see them do here though, which other apps do do, is have that conversation to kind of guide you through where you might sit on a risk spectrum. So what kind of investor you are. If they simply put like a disclaimer of, you know, markets can go up and down and, and all this kind of stuff, for me personally, that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be good enough because the idea is they're providing you with a vehicle, they should empower you to make that decision in terms of which portfolio you should be invested in as a first time investor. So let's have a look at this specifically. So learn more. So right, these are all their themes. So they have got here one, two, three, four, five, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, fifteen. They've got eighteen themes. Now that seems quite a lot. So Again, how are they going to guide you so that you can clearly and correctly identify which one of these portfolios you should be invest invested in as a first time investor? Personally, I think that it would have been easier if they'd done a load of work and they curated maybe three, four portfolios for you to choose from. Because as a first time investor, if you don't know about investing, you don't know about the stock market or you don't know about um, stock indexes, then it's very, very hard for you to be able to make a decision based on 18 themes. 18 themes seems really excessive. So what's, what do they do to help you arrive at, right, this is the right portfolio for me. That's what I'm really interested in here. So right, choose from a range of themes that reflect your interests and beliefs, okay? Investments are grouped into themes via exchange traded funds. ETFs are baskets of securities that trade on an exchange. The value of your investment can go down as well as up, so you could get back less than you invested. Your capital is at risk. If you're unsure about investing, please seek advice from a financial advisor. Now, this is what I did not want them to do. I didn't want them to kind of just stay and put the standard disclaimer because every, every company in the UK, who's regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority here in the UK, who provides investment services, has to put this down as a standard disclaimer. They have to state this as part of their compliance obligations. But what are they doing to help you arrive at a decision as to whether you should be a pure gold, a foodie, a world's greatest, an adventurer, or a money maker? How do you agree? So this is pure gold. So. The days you had to be a king or a pirate to own gold are long behind us. Gold has been a universal indicator of wealth since the dawn of time, and that isn't changing anytime soon. As one of the most resilient and priced and prized materials on earth, gold has long has long been a favorite for, for portfolio diversification. Yes, invest in this fund and become the owner of pure gold bullion held in the safe by JP Morgan. Okay. So invest in purely in gold. Okay, that's fine. But gold isn't where you're gonna make a load of money. Gold is a staple asset class that big investment houses will use to diversify portfolios. So they would use it as a counter lever, as a safe haven when they've invested in a load of stock possibly in riskier markets or riskier stock, they would use gold as a safe haven, haven as a diversifier in that portfolio. Investing purely in gold doesn't necessarily mean you're going to make a lot of money. Plus, the price to get invested in gold is actually quite high. So effectively what they're doing here is they're going to be buying an ETF in gold. But let's have a look at some of the other things because I guess this is where we're really gonna get into the nooks and, and crannies of it. Let's have a look at uh, Flying the Flag, which will be a d domestic UK fund, I would imagine. So within this list of companies here, they've only got, what's that, eight, 12, 13 companies. They've got Domino's Pizza, Dixon's Carphone, William Hill, Talk Talk, Cine World, Super Dry, Bellway, Booker, JD, Avast. Okay, 
these companies aren't all FTSE 100 companies, which is what I would have expected as an offering for first time investors, because yes, you need to be invested in the market, but you need to manage your risk. So these look like maybe FTSE 250, maybe even AIM listed companies, which is great. There's nothing wrong with that, but there's still a question over the risk that you're taking by investing in these companies. So for example, Dixon Carphone, what's going on with them at the moment with the coronavirus? How badly have their stock been impacted by what's going on right now? So these are all questions that I would be asking specifically. I mean, look, all of these companies will be impacted. The question will be, why have they selected these companies? Cineworld, <laughs> you know, what cash reserves do they have? Are they still gonna be here after the coronavirus and after this lockdown has come to an end? That is the big question because these guys aren't FTSE 100 companies that will have millions and billions in cash reserves the risk of investing in these companies are quite high. And as a first time investor, it's managing that risk that is really, really important. So they haven't really talked about any of that. They've not explained the risk to you. They've just simply given you that disclaimer, which personally I don't think is good enough as a service, trying to get you to put your hard earned money with them as a first time investor. That's just me and those are the kind of things that I'm looking at. I wanna have a look at their learning hub because I think the learning hub, I think, what they do here is very, very good because they give you a basis to start learning. And frankly, if you are a first time investor, you need to understand how the markets work. You need to understand what you're going into. And yes, they have a responsibility to be able to tell you this stuff, but the responsibility and the onus really is on you to take time to learn that information, to let it sink in, because effectively you are taking all the responsibility here. It is your money. So you have to learn understand these kind of things so let's have a look at the learning hub the learn learning hub straight off the bat they've got some good topics introduction to dividends pound cost averaging this is effectively what you're doing pound cost averaging is the idea that if you're buying stock on a monthly basis right then you will buy stock at different prices one one day you might get it at say one pound next month you might get it at 80p the next month you might get it at one pound 20 you'll get them at different cost over a period of time and the idea is that over the long term it means that it will add value to your portfolio because you bought stocks at different levels so they'll each be worth different amounts and if the market goes up then Happy days. Pound cost averaging is important. The difference between stock exchange and stock index, that's also very, very, very important. You have to know the difference between the two. And I think within the help here, I counted it, they've got 15 topics. Again, I haven't seen anybody else do this. This is something that Wombat do extremely well. They have provided this as a resource for you to learn. However, I think as a first time investor, there are a number of questions that you need to ask. So what I think is really important to acknowledge here is first and foremost, what you do and what you don't get with Wombat. Wombat is a service that allows you to invest in direct shares. So you're buying shares in companies directly. But with that, there are a number of questions that you have to ask. And the first question is, where is your defense? It's all good buying shares in businesses and it sounds exciting. However, as a first time investor, you really need to consider how you're going to diversify your portfolio. An analogy that I often use is a football one. I'm a uh, Manchester United fan. And if I were be to be playing in the Champions League final against a Real Madrid or a Barcelona, there is no way that I would select 11 attacking players. I would not go and put out 11 Bruno Fernandes. It's, I just wouldn't do it. It's insanity to do so. You need to have defensive players like Harry Maguire, Juan Bissaka. You need those guys on the field of play to prevent you from conceding goals, from taking a loss. This is exactly the same when you're investing. Equities are your attacking players. They're your Bruno Fernandes, they're your Pogba, they're your uh, Anthony Martial, they're your Marcus Rashford. Your bonds are your Harry Maguire, your Victor Lindelof. You need those players to stop you from conceding goals, from taking a loss. You need your attacking players, your equities, in order to score goals and get a decent return on the stock market. The two things go together. You can't have one without the other. Well, you can, but you shouldn't. And when you talk about investing in the markets, it's not good practice to have one without the other. So you really need to think about defense and ask the question of 
defense. The second thing you need to ask is cost. Really important. It's not the end or or be all, but as a first time investor, it's important to keep the cost down. We know that if you have a, an account with over a thousand pounds that you pay one pound per month. Now that doesn't sound a lot, it's 12 pounds per year, but over and above that, you've got a 0.45% charge and the ETFs also have a charge. So everything's relative. If you've got a thousand pounds, 0.45 isn't a lot of money. If you've got 10,000, then you're starting to think about it. If you've got a hundred thousand, then you're definitely thinking about it. But over and above that, the ETF cost. So you need to be clear, ask the question, how much does the ETF cost? In my mind, if the ETF is going to cost anywhere between 0.2, 0.25%, then you're going to be in the region of 0.6, 0.7. And for, for what's on offer here, I think that's quite expensive. So it would be prudent of you to shop around and make sure that you are selecting the best option that is cost effective for you. The last thing you want to do as a first time investor is pay a load of charges and that takes away from the growth that you're trying to achieve on relatively relatively small amounts that you're investing in the first place. Great news about Wombat is they are held to very high standards. They are authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. For me, that is a key selection criteria whenever you're working with any provider. They have to be registered authorized by the Financial Conduct Authority. Because they are, you will also be covered by the Financial Conduct, uh, Financial Services Compensation Scheme, which means that if Wombat were to go into administration or become insolvent, that up to 85,000 pounds of your original investment is also going to be covered under the scheme. That's fantastic news. That is your safety net that gives you a little bit of security in knowing that you're protected. So that is my review of Wombat and you know Wombat they're great guys. I had a conversation with them last year on Instagram. They follow me, I follow them and I asked them a few questions about how they work, how they operate, how they manage risk and how it is that they actually funnel people through to their themes. At that point they were only launching and they didn't really give me a definitive answer. The answer that I got back was very very vague and they didn't want to give me any more. I think maybe they were thinking that I was asking on behalf of a competitor or something like that, I don't know. But it's really important that you are, ask questions. And if you're not getting the answers that you want, then you need to t make the decision as, uh, as a consumer around whether you're going to use them or not. But I hope that everything that I've gone through in this video at least arms you with a few things that you can take away to base your own research on. I think that's really, really important. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, if you've enjoyed it, please don't forget to smash the like button. It will really help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified when these videos arrive every Monday. If you've not listened to my podcast, I would love for you to check it out. That's where I talk about finances, investing, money, management the whole shebang we talk about a lot there and in particular there are two episodes that i think would really really benefit you one called in, uh, investing for beginners and the other called how investments are built in that particular episode i speak about equities and bonds and you'll be able to get a bit more of understanding of how those two things work together to manage risk within the portfolio so please do, do do check that out it's called the conversation of money podcast it's available on apple podcast google podcast and Spotify. But guys, thank you so much. Until the video next week, I'll catch you later.